Been a Georgia jazz musician for a long time now. Like many other musicians, I've had to experience secondhand smoke throughout my career. Way too many have experienced heart disease, cancer, or respiratory illness trying to make a living. The only way to protect musicians, workers, and patrons' health is 100% smoke-free venues. Text Georgia to 46839 to learn more. The American Heart Association, striving to save and improve lives. For information, the Baxters, available now wherever books are sold. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, home of Southern Sports and Talk, Noonan, Sharpsburg, Franklin. With SRN News, I'm Ron DeRockstra. Authorities are searching for a motive for the gunman who killed 10 people at a Los Angeles area ballroom dance club during the Lunar New Year celebrations over the weekend. The Monterey Park slaying sent a wave of fear through Asian American communities in region and cast a shadow over the festivities nationwide. The gunman was found Sunday dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound in a van. Authorities say he fled in the vehicle after people thwarted his attempt at a second shooting Saturday night. Correspondent Larry Marino has more on how the police finally cornered the suspect. The manhunt came after a gunman killed 10 people at a ballroom dance studio late Saturday amid Lunar New Year celebrations in the predominantly Asian-American community of Monterey Park. The suspect likely tried and failed to target a second dance hall. According to authorities, the van was found in Torrance another community home to many Asian Americans, about 22 miles from the second location. Larry Marino, Los Angeles. At least a dozen people injured, one critically when a gunman opened fire inside a Baton Rouge, Louisiana club. Police believe it was a targeted shooting. So far, no arrests have been made. Senior Democrats, dismayed by a steady stream of startling disclosures, expressed criticism yesterday on how President Biden handled classified material after leaving office. On the other side of the aisle, Republican Congresswoman Nancy Mace tells NBC's Meet the Press the administration should have spoken up sooner about the first set of documents. I am grateful that the president is now being more transparent about it, but he did hide it for for two months once it was discovered, and then nobody knew about it for five years. Oklahoma Congressman Kevin Hearn says House Republicans will hold the president and other government agencies accountable for how public documents were handled. On Wall Street, Dow futures up 31 points. NASDAQ's ahead by 14. This is SRN News. Former NFL coach Tony Dungy believes God recently used football. SRN News. Are you looking for a reliable dental practice that not only cares about your teeth, but is friendly to work with? How about one that offers great deals and new patient promotions? Well, your search is over. Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton, Georgia, is committed to giving you the biggest and brightest smile. Right now, get a $99 new patient special, including x-rays and exam. Maybe you're looking for veneers. Most Valuable Smiles veneer special includes one free veneer with every five purchased. Or get that bright white smile you've always wanted by taking advantage of an exclusive $100 off Zoom whitening treatment when you book today. And don't forget that 2022 is almost over. That means most insurance policies will reset by the new year, and to avoid losing that extra money, you need to use it or lose it. Book an appointment today with Most Valuable Smiles in downtown Eatonton to lock in these exclusive deals. Call 706-623-0318 or visit mostvaluablesmiles.com. Active Pest Control offers the best services and prices to protect your home, offering both monthly and quarterly pest control services, plus specific services like bed bugs, German roach, and flea control. Even if you can't see them, insects are all around you 24-7. Active Pest Control wants to be the first line of defense. Active Pest Control, repair, bond, best termite coverage around. Active Pest Control, 34 Jefferson Street, Newton, 770-954-9941. Hey guys, Happy New Year from Leaf and Bean. We have some amazing drink specials to tell you about. First off is this Snickerdoodle Latte. Yeah, it's just like the cookie. It's very amazing. Next up is a bourbon brown sugar slash maple mixed latte. If you like our bourbon brown sugar, you're going to like this drink too. It definitely adds a new kick to it. For the kids this month, we have the Sugar Plum Frappe, which is blackberry and vanilla frappe mixed together. It doesn't have any caffeine for it, so that's why it's kid friendly. And last but not least, we have a spiked chai with Captain Morgan's. So if you already love our chai, which lots of people do, you're going to really like this version of it, too, with the Captain Morgan shot. We really appreciate you coming in. We're about to celebrate nine years in business. Thank you so much for supporting us. Have a good year. Hello. 
I'm Pina Payne with Contour Mortgage, and we're so excited. We have just moved to this new company, and we are located at 560 Noonan Crossing Bypass in Noonan next to Art and Jake's, and we have some great products. Our interest rates are better than any other companies, and we also have some great products with the for the VA. Um, we can do a better deal for you with fees than any other company. We have a lot of different kind of programs. Fishbone Fried Chicken is back in a brand new location. 31 Jackson Street, Suite A here in Noonan. Same great taste. The best chicken around. Fish dinners. Open Monday through Saturday, 10.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Dine in. Take out. It's Wishbone Fried Chicken right next door to their former location. Wishbone Fried Chicken, 31 Jackson Street, Sweet A, here in Newton. Hey, folks, this is Mark White with The Mark White Show, and you can tune in to The Mark White Show every Saturday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. right here on Rock 99, WQEE, The Key, the home of Southern Sports and Talk. WQEE 99.1 FM. We'd like to thank our listeners and sponsors for all your support. WQEE 99.1 FM, The Key, ahead of the game. If you would like to sponsor a show or host your very own show, call 770-347-9947. Ask for Ryan O'Neill. Let your voice be heard. Thank you once again. Call 770-347-9947 to support WQEE The Key. This is Jay Krupp of the Columbus River Dragons, your home for River Dragons hockey in Noonan 99. The views and opinions of this show and program are not the views and opinions of this station, its management, or its clientele. Yes, I am the game. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. Three hours, or I like to call it three periods, of the most fun you can have with your clothes on. Coming up this hour, we go inside the lair. We go behind the mic, and we learn more about the voice of the Columbus River Dragons. Yes, Tom Callahan is with us here this hour. We'll do that right in just a few moments. Also, stay tuned. We'll end the hour and get you a couple things going on tonight on, uh, of course, Monday Night Raw and get you ready to head into Tuesday's edition of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary and all the great program. we got the remainder of the day. Tune in for Rod Peterson today from 12 to 2. You have the best in NHL, uh, Canadian football, and National Football League updates. But first, for all of you guys listening, tune in here. Here's what i got to say to you, haters. If anybody likes it or not, I'm the man around here. That's right, I am the man around here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, our guest this morning has, uh, you know, 300, over 350 games in the NHL play-by-play. He was with the Nashville Predators. He's done some on-air work for ESPN Radio in Nashville, just to let you guys know. In addition to that, besides hockey, he does like a little football, basketball, baseball, and golf. He is the one, the only, the voice of the Columbus River Dragons and the Columbus Chattahoots. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tom Callahan. Good morning, Tom. Good morning. What's going on? It's great to have you with us here on this uh, Monday edition of, I'm going to call this Behind the Mic, because I want our our listeners to get to know a little bit of the voice behind the Columbus River Dragons, because every... Every Friday and Saturday or Thursday, Friday and Saturday or Friday, Saturday and Sunday, whatever the games are, you come on and you're always talking about some of our great players from Jay Krupp to, to even Coach Jerome Bouchard and everything. Every Tuesday you're there on uh, behind the bench as the host. But we want to get to know you, Tom, and who you are. So I know you were probably born on a cold Buffalo night, but we don't want to go that far back. But let's talk a little bit about who Tom Callahan is for our listeners. Well, first of all, I was born in the fall, so I, I don't know if it was cold or if it was doing <laughs> that weird warm thing called us sometimes. But, um, you know, it, 
it's been a crazy path for me, honestly. Um, before I was born, my dad was a radio DJ, uh, and he was uh, out of radio by the time I came around. I'm, I'm the middle kid. Right. Um, and uh, But, you know, and so it's in the genes. And I, I was one of those kids that if I wasn't playing hockey, like I knew by 12, and I'm uh, – I'm very excited to call Chattahoots baseball coming up in the in the spring too, um, but man, I love sports. I was playing every sport you could, um, and if I wasn't playing it, then I would like stand on the side and commentate it, you know. And, and right. I just thought it was was cool. I, I remember going to games as a kid. I always had my radio with me and my headset, and, and I'd always listen uh, because I I felt that's how you learn the game. You listen to people talk about it, and I just I was drawn to that real early on. And, um, you know, had a little bit of a chance to do some stuff in high school and then into college. Um, I came out and I said, you know what, I don't really know if I can make a living at this. I don't really know what to do about it. So I got a job in regular radio. Right. Sales of all things. Um, <sighs> and, 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 <laughs> you know, I just I didn't know what to do. And so I, I lasted about three months in sales. And my, my sales manager, his name is Tom Ray. And I oh this guy. And another guy, executive producer, well, he's, he's way higher up the food chain now, but Len Wainer at ESPN Radio, back when I was a young kid, right, 20 years old, they both pulled me aside and kind of gave me the same advice in different words and said, if you want to be on the air, go be on the air. There'll be other jobs if you don't make it on the air. And so that set me on my path, journeying through the minor leagues. Um, I, I finally hooked on and... Man, this is like eight or nine states for me. I actually did have a stopover in Georgia before. I was in Augusta, Georgia for a while. Okay. Uh, for about four years. So I boomerang back somehow. There you go. Well, you're back. You're here with the Columbus River Dragons, and you're going to be the Hoots, like you said, in the spring. Can't wait for that. Now, your journey to the River Dragons, I know that you've uh, been around the different states and everything. Um we know that you had a background in the NHL. So how was it to actually get to call some major NHL games with some of the bigger teams, such as the Nashville Predators? It, it was fantastic. Uh, I mean, it was everything I had worked for uh, up to that point in my life. I right. spent nine years uh, in the minors between hockey and, and doing some baseball and some other sports. But hockey was the one that I thought I was, I was best at and loved the most. And, uh, when I got the call to Nashville, it was just incredibly exciting, and it was a completely different world. And doing that for five seasons, uh, man, I, w- I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, yeah, just the way my life went at the time is when I transitioned over to ESPN Radio right. uh, in Nashville. I ended up doing a show there for almost three years, and... Um, and that was a lot of fun, too. Um, and at the time, it, it was, you know, the move that needed to be made for me. And it just, again, it was a life choice. Uh, but, man, I, I missed it. And uh, after about three years of doing, you know, the talk radio thing, I said, yeah, I, I kind of want to go back into hockey. I miss hockey. I miss calling games. I miss, I miss the travel, which right. a lot of people don't like because you're around, you know, the guys and, and it just, you're part of a team, and, and I missed that. Right. Uh, so that's when I kind of hopped back in, and, and you know, it, the experience in Nashville was amazing. Everything was first class, yes. charter flights, meals on the plane, four- and five-star hotels, you know, awesome cities, and, and got to see a bunch of things that I never would have saw otherwise. Um, just absolutely, and the best athletes in the world as yes. far as hockey goes, and, and that was absolutely tremendous. It definitely is. And, you know, uh, I understand the travel myself because I've done travel in the past uh, for s- several things from being on the road with musicians and so, uh, or on the road as a musician and other things. What is one of your favorite places that you have visited? And also, it may not be the same place, but what is one of your favorite places that you have, you, you ha- a go-to place when you get into town that you have to go to and eat? Well, those are those are good questions. I, I can find positives in just about any city, even the ones that most people don't like. And let me tell you this: in the minors, right? I saw a lot of interesting places. Uh, sure. <laughs> so you know, there's 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 things to be found everywhere you go. I love personally Vancouver. Um, okay. If I'm going to pick a Canadian city, I think it's beautiful there. Uh, there's a lot to do there. 
Vancouver. Um, I'm a food guy, and I think Vancouver is a good food city. Um, in, the, in the U.S., if you don't want to leave the country, I think Chicago is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Uh, I always love, always love going to Chicago. And actually, I kind of miss, and, and maybe I'll tug on some heartstrings here a little bit, guys, but, um, you know, living in Georgia for four years, I miss Atlanta being in the NHL because yes. the Feds and the, the Thrashers had a, an okay rivalry. They were in different conferences at the time, but I always used to like coming to Atlanta. I enjoy Atlanta as a city, and uh, I think sometimes it gets a bit of a bad rap. It definitely does, and um, we, we've talked about this a number of times about – wanted another NHL team back here. We know that they moved to Canada, and we hear about it every day during our midday show because it's based out of Florida slash Canada as well, talking a lot of NHL action. But uh, I'd love to get another team in Atlanta here that is in the NHL. All right, let's talk about your journey, Tom, to the Columbus River Dragons. How did you get that call from the Columbus River Dragons? How did you find find out about our Columbus River Dragons? Yeah, so this is an interesting story, and this, I think a lot of people will relate to because it's not a sports story. Right. Uh, I was looking around and applying for some jobs and putting my name out here and there, and I get a phone call from Scott Brand, Uh who is the, uh, you know, the chief cook and bottle washer here with the the River (laughs) Dragons, and I I didn't recognize the number, and I'm one of these people. I do not answer a number I don't know. I just don't. You're going to voice that. Um, So... I get this voicemail from Scott, and he sounds incredulous and in disbelief that I had put my name out there for this job with the River Dragons. And I love the fact that it's both baseball and hockey, as I said earlier. But right. he's like, are you sure you want to apply here is basically the, the return I got. Well, as it turns out, uh, Jeff Krupp, who's the COO of this team, right? Jeff and I know each other from way back. When I was with the Elmira Jackals, then, of the United Hockey League, which is now long gone, and he was with the team in Glens Falls, New York, uh, at the time as well. And we were in the same league. He, at the time, was a sales guy. I was a play-by-play and PR guy for the Elmira Jackals, but we had come across each other a couple times back then, and and we knew each other from then. And as soon as we talked on the phone, the connection was, was instant. It was, you know, kind of about the good old days, and... We laughed about a bunch of things, and, um, you know, it was, it, it just came full circle, and uh, it, it made it very easy to come to Columbus knowing, number one, who Jeff is right. and, and, and what kind of organization he wants. And you talk about a team that wants to win championships. I don't know anybody who wants to win a championship more than Jeff. Oh, I know. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and then it's, it's an intense driving thing. But the other thing I really like here, and uh, I mean, it's just a bonus to have, but it's a tremendous one. The attitude that Coach Bichard puts into this team from the top down about, you know, hockey is part of life, but it isn't all of it. And yes, it's what you're doing, but he wants to make sure everybody is good both on and off the ice. And I, I love that because... When you're here and you're at this level with the River Dragons and the FPHL, you're doing it because you love it. You're not doing it because you're going to make a million dollars. Right. Uh, and that's, you know, that's so important. And I think the, the, the culture here is, is tremendous. And so it's been a great thing for me to step into. Uh, personally, I felt like I've had a lot of uh, ability to, to, you know, pick up the ball and run with it, which I feel like I'm starting to do a little bit now that i got a chance to settle in. I literally, guys, walked in my first oh, no. <laughs> footsteps in Columbus, Georgia, uh, this time around was to walk in in the middle of the second period of the, of the preseason game and just start calling things. <laughs> I, I so that was my introduction to River Dragons hockey. And uh, so it's been a little crazy, but I'm starting to get it under control now. And you know what? That was the best introduction of all times because – this, the preseason game was on, Mississippi Sea Wolves, and Scott had start, started the game, and then you're coming, you come right in the middle of that, and all of a sudden, everybody, like, everybody goes from Scott to you, they're like, oh, there's that NHL voice, yeah, you know, so I think it was a perfect introduction to, to the fans in Columbus and in Georgia uh, for you to do that, because I think it was the perfect, perfect introduction. Well, speaking of that, Tom, um, 
I know a lot of people, in, especially in Columbus, they really come out to the games, and we've had a couple of great uh, house shows, I should say, there at Columbus the last couple of months and everything. Do you, do you when you come here, were you thinking that, or I'm knowing a little bit about Georgia, were you thinking that uh, there was going to be a lot of hockey fans here in the South, or were you, were you thinking that, uh, oh, well, you know, there's just going to be very few? Guys, I've worked in uh, now Georgia twice, but right. I've also worked in Texas. I've worked in Tennessee right. on hockey. Um, I've been all over the South, and I have stopped a long time ago using the phrase non-traditional market. I don't like it. Excellent. Any town is a hockey town ah, yes. if, the pe- if the people like it. And Columbus has a rich hockey history. I actually did call one game here in Columbus. Uh, back when they were in the East Coast League as a cotton mouth. Yep. Uh, so I, I know the roots go back here. And all you need to do is take a walk through, if you ever come down to River Dragons game, walk through that Hall of Fame that's out there. Yep. Um, you know, you, you can see it and feel the rich hockey and the rich sports history here. People love it. I mean, you know, baseball, Golden Park, just across the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Like, people here love sports. They, they love hockey. Our fans are passionate. Um, they, it, it's it's absolutely tremendous. So walking in, I knew there was going to be a, a very passionate fan base. I just didn't realize how big it was going to be. Uh, I think right. that's been the most pleasing surprise for me is that there are people who know the team that, in a wider circle, I guess, than I'd expect. And, and I think you guys are a big reason why, and I want to give you a shout-out as well because – uh, you know, we're thankful that we get a chance to, to broadcast um, uh, with you guys because, uh, honestly, I feel like people miss hockey. And I, I referenced the Thrashers earlier. and yep. They missed the Cotton Mouth. Yep. You know, the River Dragons are a successful team, and, and it's easy to get behind a, a team that's winning, and, and it's fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. And, and I think that's just tremendous. I was very pleased when I got here. It definitely is, and and we do appreciate you being here too because a lot of the programming that connects on our station, um, the River Dragons are getting to be known in Canada now, and I know that's uh, an old stomping grounds of the head coach because he's from Regina originally, but uh, so I know that the, we're excited for the River Dragons season. This season has been i got to say, Tom, one of the best seasons. They've done over the past several years. It's been growing and growing. Domination, that loss last year with the Watertown Wolves. But this year, it looks like uh, there's a possibility that uh, there's a championship in the gold of the River Dragons. And I know we don't want to say anything like that and put any bad juju on or anything. But what do you think about the River Dragons season so far this season, the good, the bad, and the ugly? Well, and – it's a perfect opportunity for us to bring it full circle and come back and talk about this River Dragons team and, and face a little adversity against Carolina these last four games. Right. Uh, they have been head and shoulders above most opponents they faced. Danbury, I think, was the team we've seen so far that's pushed us the most. Yep. Uh, but you you knew watching those two teams play that Columbus was the better hockey team. Um, Carolina, especially if you watched only the first two games, you might not have that opinion. Right. I look at probably Carolina's the best team we've seen other than that for Columbus. And, and it's good that we get the test now and we have to prove ourselves. And, it, and now we know, okay, we've started. I, I mean, a win percentage over 800 in any sport is amazing. Right. Absolutely amazing. Right. And so for the River Dragons, they've been scoring almost at will. They've been getting tremendous goaltending. The defense has been there, which it isn't always in the FPHL. So they've had everything going right for them. Um, and I, I can't say enough about the fact that this team has depth. It has scoring depth. There's three lines there that can go out and hurt you offensively, which is not something other teams have the luxury of. Um, we are pretty deep defensively in this league as well. I think we have four or five quality defensemen. Uh, you know, depending on who's in or out of the lineup right now, unfortunately, Edgar Zoslinch is, is suspended. Yes. Um, you know, so it, it's it's deeper than most organizations at this level, and and we're always improving. Um, you know, we're we're constantly trying to bring in 
the next piece um, if it's available and it makes sense. And I think that that's what any really good organization does. You know, you don't want to rest on your laurels. And, and the River Dragons have done that. So this weekend was encouraging to me, too, because I wanted to see the response as much as our fans did. Right. I wanted to say, all right, Friday night, I felt like they played the best they've played in a long time. Mm-hmm. Uh, still lost, but that happens sometimes. Right. Then Saturday they come out and they play another excellent game. It's back and forth, and this time they win. So I really am encouraged by the quality and the depth of this roster, and I feel very good about their chances for a championship caliber run. I definitely agree with you on that, Tom. And, yeah, it was a great weekend back and forth, winning in overtime. So, um, before we get into this Friday's game, tomorrow night, 6 o'clock, it's Behind the Bench Coaches Show with Coach Jerome Bouchard, Tom Callahan. And who's your player guest tomorrow night? You know what? I, I don't know. I'm about to walk in and start uh, looking at guys, and I can tell if they have broke okay. that gaze. Um, you know, they might they might be trying to duck me for this week, but no, I walk <laughs> into the room and I, I try to pick guys based on uh, who had a, a hot week, but also who hasn't done yet. So I think I'm going to ask Jacob Kelly. Let's see if okay. I can get Jacob Kelly to do it. That sounds good to me. We'll have that for you tomorrow night across the River Dragons Network and on the network here for you at 6 o'clock. All right, let's, uh, a team that we have seen this season, the Prowlers, let's talk a little bit about that going into this weekend and, and what you got, what you're expecting with the Prowlers coming into this weekend. Port Huron is a team that is offensively exciting. Right. Uh, they have some guys who can score, and they like to play a game, to, to borrow the baseball analogy, they go for the home run pass. Right. Uh, or, or they go for the long bomb if it were football. They're always trying to stretch the ice always trying to get a forward cutting in behind your defense, looking for that breakaway. And they're a team that's okay with failing 8 out of 10 because it means they get two breakaways and a chance to score uh, on some really high-danger opportunities, you know, at least twice out of those 10. So, uh, you know, it it makes you play a different game. Um, Instead of being able to step up defensively, sometimes you have to look over your shoulder uh, instead of trying to maintain everything in front of you because you don't want to give up that opportunity. Uh, you know, so it's it's a little bit of an adjustment. It puts a lot of onus on the forward to control and maintain possession in the offensive zone, uh, and that is something we have gotten better at uh, working on our cycle game along the wall, uh, which is when you see guys – if you see players, and I'll explain the cycle briefly, is just when the puck is on either side near the corner, you'll see players kind of move in a circular motion. Right. One guy goes either up, he normally goes up the wall and then tries to leave the puck behind him to the next guy. And if all things considered, if it works perfectly, you would run that circular motion until the defensive coverage breaks down. Right. And then one of those players is free for an opportunity. We have gotten much better at that, uh, and I think that we are improving that game, and that is going to go a long way towards dictating this success against Port Huron. Uh, the the problem is also have a very good goaltender, uh, and so, you know, some nights you just quantity uh, of shots is going to dictate whether or not you're going to be able to win the game, and so uh, they're always a threat. It's probably going to be some high-scoring, exciting hockey, and, and you know, they're – they're an entertaining team to watch, just like the River Dragons. But I, I don't care who the River Dragons are playing. This is a fun, fun hockey team to watch. It definitely is. Well, tell everybody when the Air Force Heat and Air pregame show is this weekend and a puck drop for both games. Absolutely. So our, our pregame show is always half hour before puck drop, no matter where we are or what we're doing. Uh, Sat- Friday and Saturday home games are 7.30 p.m. at the Columbus Civic Center. So Air Force Heating and Air pregame show starts at 7 o'clock. And uh, don't forget, we've got some great promotions going on this weekend. Uh, Hockey is for Everyone is on Friday night. It's an adaptive and inclusive game. A little bit lower sensory experience maybe than what uh, fans might normally be used to, but uh, it is geared towards fans with disabilities. And it's a very special night for us. And then Saturday night is Pink the Rink. We're wearing special pink jerseys, uh, honoring those who have fought, continue to fight cancer, uh, the cancer survivors. Uh, and and always a a tremendous cause. We're really looking forward to that as well. That's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, there will be special pink merchandise as well. 
if anybody's interested in that, but uh, that'll be Saturday night. Sounds good. I appreciate you being with us here at the time. Before I let you go, I'm not going to ask you about your Buffalo Bills, but I do. I am glad that DeMar Hamlin was able to come back and be on the field and, and be seen after uh, the scary incident that happened a couple of Mondays ago. But I do want to, your thoughts. Who do you think may be going into the Super Bowl, the final two teams in the Super Bowl? I'm asking everybody that. I am very impressed by the Bengals. I was in that shortened game against the Bills several weeks ago. Uh, Joe Burrow is a generational talent. They have incredible receivers, uh, and and they dare you to stop them, and teams still can't stop them. KC being a little banged up, Mahomes with the injury, um, I I don't know. Uh, Kansas City just didn't seem like they had as much as they needed recently and I really feel like the Bengals are going from the AFC and then on the NFC side I've been so impressed with the 49ers Mm. this year Uh, and I I really think they're a complete package and I think they proved it again last night Uh, man it's going to be hard for me to not think Bengals 49ers well they have a Super Bowl 16 rematch I think and it's uh, it should be a lot of fun although no Kenny Anderson Joe Montana matchup (laughs) No. Uh, you never know. You never know. We might be talking about this one 20, 30 years down the line, too. You never know. You never know. But, you know, one thing I thought was cool is Jerry Rice was on the sidelines last night for the 49ers, and they even gave him a game ball one time during the game. So I thought that was a pretty neat uh, neat uh thing to do there too well tom it's been a pleasure having you with us here this morning and of course the next time everybody hears tom be tomorrow night at six o'clock on behind the bench coaches show as he's going to be talking with a player and coach jerome bichard about last weekend's game and headed into port Ron this weekend at home and of course tickets are available once again tom where at so you can, if you're out of town you can go online at ticketmaster.com uh, also, Civic Center box office. You can always buy a walk up if you want. If you want to buy in advance, give us a call. 706 507 GOAL, which is 706 507 4625. All right, sounds good. We'll be back here in a moment. You're listening to Rhino Radio Penitentiary. This has been, I'm going to call this Behind the Mic with the voice of the Columbus River Dragons and the voice of the Columbus Chattahoots, Tom Callahan. Thank you, Tom, for being with us. Thanks for having me. Back in a moment. (laughs) Been a Georgia jazz musician for a long time now. Like many other musicians, I've had to experience secondhand smoke throughout my career. Way too many have experienced heart disease, cancer, or respiratory illness trying to make a living. The only way to protect musicians, workers, and patrons' health is 100% smoke-free venues. Text Georgia to 46839 to learn more. The American Heart Association, striving to save and improve lives. With thousands of diamond engagement rings, we make it easy this Valentine's Day to find the perfect one. That's the Jared difference. Best selection, best prices, and a lifetime diamond guarantee. Jared, love brilliantly. Diamond guarantee requires six-month inspections at Jared. Visit jared.com radio for details. 